Welcome to lesson 103 in which I'll show you how to convert from grams to moles. Now in order to do this you're going to need a periodic table to first determine molar mass. The key to grams to moles and moles to gram conversions is to make sure you know how to do molar mass. So if you're not sure, stop right now and go to lesson 102. Now this is the problem that is all worked out for you so you can see the problem in its entirety. The problem is where we're converting 12 grams of methane to moles. And you'll notice in position number one, we have the 12 grams. And then position two, we have 16 grams. And then, of course, position three, we have the one mole. Now, where do all these numbers come from? Well, the 12 grams of methane, that's the starting unit. You're told in the problem that you're starting with 12 grams. Next, in, problem, in position 2, you'll notice that this is where we're having the canceling unit. With dimensional analysis, you always start with making sure you're following the units. And then position 3 is the ending unit, or the fact that we want to go to moles. So if we look very carefully at, these, uh, at this problem, you'll see that the grid is set up, so the starting unit and the canceling units um, are gone and we end with moles. You'll also notice that this means that molar mass is sitting down at position number two. All right, so let's look at a little little detail here. Let's just look at the grid. Students sometimes have a little issue with the grid itself. So again, we've got positions one, two, and three, and I just want to walk you through again. Whatever problem you have, that's your starting unit is in position one. And the position two is going to be canceling that starting unit out. And then we have the ending unit. So in our case of going from gram to moles, we're going to the, the position two is where molar mass. And I bet if you figured it out right away, you can say, oh, well, then when we go moles to grams, well, then it's the molar mass ends up in position three. All right. So. Let's look at another problem where we're asked to convert 24.5 grams of chlorine gas to moles. Well, we start with 24.5 grams, and then, of course, we know right away that we're going to put the molar mass of chlorine down on the bottom. And then we do our math, 24.5 divided by 70.9, and in the calculator display we see this, these long digits. We're going to use the rules of significant figures, in which we end up with three significant figures, and we end up with 0 0.345. We round up because of that extra 5 at the end, and we end up with 0 0.346. Okay, so now it's your turn. Go ahead and convert 7.54 grams of sucrose to moles.